guys, it's me, Miss Darizard, and we are here for the Miss Darizard Draft League Recap Playoff Edition. This will be the last one for Season 2. This will be wrapping up Season 2. Um, so before we jump into the highlights, let's do a, a quick reminder of where we are with playoffs. Because it's been three weeks, y'all. It's been three weeks since the last recap. Uh, but I figured since there are only five matches total in the playoffs, I do the playoffs all in one video, so here we are. But the first round, uh, just a reminder, um, the number one and two seeds both had a first round bye. So, Hurly Whirly, uh, the coach of the Pokemon Friendship Society, has a first round bye. And God Bear, the coach of the Chicago Phalanx, had a first round bye as well, the number two seed. Then the number three seed, who was myself, uh, the Olivine City Bolties took on the number six seed Sanibel Salazzles, coached by Kerfungal. Uh, the winner would move on to take on the number one seed Pokemon Friendship Society, or I'm sorry, the number two seed, the number two seed Chicago Phalanx. Um, and then the number four seed Lucknow Latte Guzzlers, coached by Spigasparce, took on the number five seed Newbark Normalizers, coached by Sergeant Mech. And the winner of that one would take on uh, the number one seed Pokemon Friendship Society. So. Let's jump in. The um, <laughs> hey Pry, thank you so much. Thank you so much for the sub. Twenty months is insane. Twenty months is insane. Welcome in, buddy. I love, love, love you. Um, but yeah. So the first match that we'll talk about. Um, this is first round match. This is myself, uh, Olivine City Bolties versus Sandal Bell Salazzles. Uh, and let's see how this one goes. Um, so right off the bat, I lead with Rain. I figure if we're going up against a Mega Charizard, Rain's going to be helpful for a number of reasons. Also, Rain really helps my team. Uh, Moltres likes Rain because Hurricanes don't miss. Um, Polyrath, Polyrath and Kabutops both have Swift Swim, so they're both doubled speed in Rain, so obviously that's beneficial. Um, this Ferrothorn is a problem though. Early on in the game, I remember, or early on in the game, I remember thinking, okay, if I can get rid of Ferrothorn, if I can get rid of Ferrothorn, Kabutops wins. So how am I going to get rid of this Ferrothorn? This is this is what we need to figure out. In the first time I played Kerfungal, this Duskops gave me fits. Set up Trick Room, burnt my strong Pokemon, was just super annoying. But we see Trick Room again, uh, which I wasn't expecting. Because Charizard in Trick Room is really weird, and then he switches into a Hurricane and takes a ton of damage. An absolute ton of damage. Uh, then we read the Thunder Punch because he ran Thunder Punch last time we played. So I made the easy swap into Lupin, uh, who was immune, and then we get rid of Mega Charizard X first. So that's a huge threat immediately off the board. Um, he doesn't want his Ferrothorn taking an overheat, so he switches into Crobat, who dies. Uh, Moltres overheats are something uh, y'all are going to be seeing a lot of during this recap. Uh, and next I go back into Politoed to get the rain back up. Fungal decides to continue being annoying and Trick Room again. So I decide, hey, you know what? If this is the game you want to play, I'm going to trap you and Parish Song and you're going to lose your ghosty friend. And that's exactly what happens. Oh snap, what a move. Yes. I appreciate the sarcasm. But well, welcome in. Welcome in, Brian, and welcome in, God Bear. I hope you're both doing well today. Uh, but yeah, so this is just... Politoed wins this uh, We swap Politoed out. They go for a one last trick room, loses their Dusclops. Uh, now that's scary, right? This thing is absolutely terrifying. It punches an absolute hole. Like, it can punch a hole in my team. At this point, I'm trying to figure out... What do I do to minimize damage here? I need to waste as many Trick Room turns as possible. So I start sacrificing things. I'm like, I don't need Crocodile anymore. Let's go ahead and sack Crocodile. Uh, I don't need Politoed anymore. Let's get Rain up, or I'm sorry, not Politoed. I, okay, so what I actually do is I go into Politoed to bait the Moonblast and then eat it with, eat it with Moltres, get some really good chip off with Hurricane, which is guaranteed in the rain. Going to Dragapult, who has Thunder, which also doesn't miss in the rain, who's able to finish off the Primarina. We have to swap out here because this thing gets sturdy and play rough, also Ice Shard, so like we don't want to fuck around with that because it could take out our Dragapult. And <laughs> there's the there's the sub notification. 
Uh, then here I actually do something really, really questionable, actually. Um, let's, let's actually go back. I got a little distracted here. Uh, so once we kill the Primarina, they go into Dunfin. Now, at this point, I go into Polyrath. This was actually a misplay. Uh, Brian, thank you so much. Actually, I just realized that was for your sub, not for a prize sub. Thank you so much. 23 months is a lot, but it's not two years. It's only close. Only close, uh, but thank you. Um, I go into Polyrath here, which is actually a misplay because Polyrath is my win con. Like, let's, we need to kill Ferrothorn. What was the thing I said at the start of the match? I needed to figure out a way to kill Ferrothorn. Well, Ferrothorn's one of two Pokemon that are still alive. I make a huge mistake here and go into Polyrath. Polyrath is my win con. Polyrath is how I get rid of this Ferrothorn. Um, I should have not have gone into Dunfin here. By going into by going into Polyrath here, I actually lose Polyrath. Um, and that puts me in a much, much worse position to take out this Ferrothorn. Um, so I just try to get some chip off with Kabutops here. And we just focus on momentum with flip turn. Rain boost flip turn does a decent amount of damage. Shadow Ball does some pretty good damage. Leech Seed is super annoying though. <coughs> but it looks like we just keep spamming. Um, we keep spamming Shadow Balls because they're just slowly wearing down the Ferrothorn. And because of the burn on Ferrothorn, it's just not able to do too much damage. He switches into a Shadow Ball. I'm still afraid of Ice Shard, so I have to swap out here into Politoed who actually eats the Ice Shard, even though it's only at 20% health. I just realized you're probably recording for a YouTube video and I'm totally ruining it. It's okay, it's it's not a problem, I promise. But yes, I am recording for a YouTube video. Um, Then we go back in the Kabutops, who's able to finish it off. Uh, Rain boosted flip turn is more than enough to finish off the Dunfin. Gives us a clean swap into Dragapult, who's able to finish off Ferrothorn. So, uh, first playoff match of the postseason. Uh, I managed to defeat Kerfungal and move on to round two where I will take on Chicago Phalanx. But before we touch on that match, we will touch on this one. Uh, and this is uh, Spake of Sparse, uh, the Luck Not Latte Guzzlers versus Sergeant Mech, um, the new Bark Normalizers. So let's see how this one plays out. Uh, so Spake leads with Durant versus Cinderace and just loses it, just completely loses it. I think what may have happened in that exchange, um, let's go back here. I think what may have happened in this exchange is I think this was probably Choice Scarf Durant, and uh, this was I think I I think I know for sure that this was Choice Scarf Cinderace, um, and he was expecting outspeed but he did not. And then just lost his Durant to a Pyro Ball. Goes into Doug Trio who has an arena trap, so Sergeant Mech can't swap out here. And this thing also is Choice Scarf and takes out uh, the Cinderace. <clears throat> um, yeah, he even said in the chat, over predicting, big sad. So that's exactly what we saw happen there. <clears throat> we see Sergeant Mech go ahead and get Stealth Rocks up here. Uh, which is going to be great for Chip. Get a super effective uh, Fire Punch off on the Aegislash and a burn. And that burn is really nice because now uh, this Kecleon is able to live some offense from this Pokemon. And then going into Star Raptor even further you know, reduces the attack. You beat Dilly, Billy, didn't you? Are y'all broken up now? Well, this isn't William playing me. This is William playing. This is William playing Spega. Um, the. Uh, Brave Bird's just not doing enough damage after the Iron Defense, uh, just making things really difficult for the Star Raptor. <clears throat> I'm an idiot. I'm so sorry. It's it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Um, we saw it not doing a lot of damage after the defense the defense boosts, but he's able to get a crit, take out the uh, Scrafty, which is actually huge. Uh, goes into Mew and starts boosting. Now we do see Mew out in front of this thing. You probably expect a ghost type attack, but now that it's cosmic power boosting, there's nothing that that Aegislash can really do with the boosts, considering that it's burnt. The Sergeant Mech just continues to boost and just continues to boost and just keeps going. 
And this is where Spega reveals Dragon Tail. Now, he kind of throws. He kind of throws there because he got really greedy um, and just continued going for the boosts. He ran the Kalox before the match at plus two defense and special defense. If he baton passes into Kangaskhan, Kangaskhan sweeps. Uh, he had a rest sleep talk with seismic toss and um, crunch. Or, I'm sorry, seismic toss and earthquake. And with the plus two defense boosts, it can't be killed. Nothing on this team can two hit kill. And he can just rest off the damage. And like without without a bunch of crits, there's just nothing. And the only thing, in fact, the only thing that was threatening to that Kangaskhan was the Aegislash, and the Aegislash was burnt, so there's nothing that could have been done. If he just passes those boosts into Kangaskhan, he wins. Uh, but instead he gets greedy, continues boosting, and that gives Spega a chance to uh, win. And Dragon Tail is actually a super cool tech on the Slowbro. We've not seen that all season from Spega, so it was really cool to see it here. Uh, he goes, <laughs> Mech goes in to Ditto to get his own Slowbro and try to force out that slow bro and misses dragon tail um but like this this is just what we see this is just what keeps happening he just keeps swapping people out dragging them over those rocks and getting damage off finally he lands the dragon tail this time swapping out the uh slow king but now you have to look at sergeant mech's team and you gotta think like how is he going to kill that slow bro the only thing on his team that can deal with that slow bro from what we've seen so far is kangaskhan so he's got to preserve kangaskhan so how does he play this interesting swap there into star raptor i think he did that to burn the king shield but if there's no opponent opponent on the field king shield doesn't activate so he still gets the king shield uh, which means the Shadow Claw isn't doing much of anything and minus one attack. Aegislash has enough bulk. I think it would have possibly lived that, but he switches out anyways. And even a crit here doesn't finish off the Dugtrio. Dugtrio able to use huge damage, but doesn't doesn't uh, finish it off. Actually dies, but gets enough damage off on the Ditto to like basically be annoying. Um, so we were talking about this with Spega. Um, if Sergeant Mech goes into Mew here and Mew is able to finish off the uh, Thunderous, Sergeant Mech wins because these two aren't able to break Kangaskhan if it's Sleep Talk. And because, but because he goes right into Kangaskhan, this thing's able to Focus Blast and kill the Kangaskhan. And because of that, Sergeant Mech loses. So Mar Sergeant Mech loses on actually a series of misplays. <clears throat> and this thing just, we do see weakness policy at this point. But it was it was a baton pass set, so he doesn't have any damaging move. So like this is over. Uh, so Spega Sparse, the Lugna Latte Guzzler, is able to beat Sergeant Mech with the new Bark Normalizers and move on to the second round. So the second round of the playoffs. Um, just to just to kind of keep y'all moving along with the bracket, uh, features myself playing the Chicago Phalanx, the number two seed. Uh, coached by Godbear. And on the other side of the bracket, you have Spega Sparse, the Look Now Latte Guzzlers, taking on the number one seed Pokemon Friendship Society, coached by Pearly Whirly. And the winner of those respective matches will take on each other for the uh, championship of the league. So let's see how this turns out. Um, this is uh, the first game of the second round, Pearly Whirly versus Spega Sparse. So these are semifinals. Uh, let's see how this plays out. We see a Slurpuff lead against uh, the Regilucky. I love Slurpuff here. Slurpuff is an amazing sticky web setter. I think that's something Spega utilizes all season. Uh, and then Spega reads the Volt Switch for the Volt Absorb and then doubles into Aegislash, which was a pretty nice series of moves, but the Paralyze into, a fully para uh, into getting fully Paralyzed was really, really good RNG for Pearly, um, which Pearly's gonna want to savor that while they can. Um, Pearly, or I'm sorry, Spega then goes into, um, <laughs> I'm getting behind here, into Scrafty to get the drop, the attack drop on the Scizor. And then we see the berry on Alphonse to reduce super effective damage, so knockoff doesn't kill. Gives Pearly a chance to get sticky webs up, which is gonna be really important chip for this match. 
uh, Flash Cannon isn't going to do anything at all to this. Now, I am actually surprised. So, as someone who has previously ran, someone who has previously ran um, Thunderous, that he didn't run Incinerate because it does get Incinerate, which is the only coverage move that's a guaranteed Oko against Scizor. And I know this because I used to run Thunderous. So I'm really surprised we don't see Incinerate on uh, the Thunderous for this match against Pearly. <clears throat> we do see Power Herb Meteor Beam, which is super fucking spicy, but the, uh, the Alolan Ninetales is able to hold on at 4%, just barely. Just barely. Um, which, I mean, what? Essentially, what does that do? In the end, it doesn't make a huge change, but it was still pretty wild. It was cool tech to see, even though it kind of got wasted. Um, they are each down one Pokemon at this point. Me and Pearly were talking about, about that. We were worried about it. Oh, the good RNG. Um, now we see that Wish is revealed, so they try to pass a Wish into Cradley, um, who lives the ancient power and gets a little bit of healing, which is really good. Oh, Incinerate. Oh, got you. Yeah, Incinerate would have been really good. I'm not sure why he didn't bring Incinerate on the, uh, the Thunderous. Would have been the perfect coverage move to deal with Pearly. Because fire is really good, is re a really good typing to deal with Pearly. Uh, in fact, the only thing on Pearly's lineup right now that resists fire is this thing, this monstrosity, who four times resists it, so just really doesn't care about fire. But other than that, Pearly's got no fire resists. We do see the shell smash, um, and immediately takes out the Runerigus. Um, and that's where Pearly, this, let's go back here and talk about this. Okay, this thing is plus two speed. It outspeeds Landorus. It outspeeds Landorus. But Pearly, who is always very slow and methodical about their decisions, quickly, quickly goes into Landorus, making Spega think, Oh, this is Choice Scarf. I better swap out. However, this was not Choice Scarf. This was not Choice Scarf. Pearly 100% bluffed Spega into uh, bluffed Spega, uh, bluffing Choice Scarf and scaring him into swapping out his boosted. No, it wasn't Scarfed. It absolutely wasn't Scarfed. Pearly even says in the in the chat, like, if I was good enough to bluff that I had a Scarf on that thing, then I guess I did my job because this wasn't Scarf from my understanding. Pearly just bluffed Scarf and scared Spega, and Spega swapped out the uh, Turtinator, Turtinator because he didn't want it to die to a Scarf Lando. Um, but we do see Earth Power there. I was told it was Scarfed. Maybe it was, but I'm confused why Pearly would say that they bluffed it being Scarf. Um, so somewhere something's not adding up. <laughs> Uh, but it doesn't matter. We see this thing right here get the uh, ancient power boost and this thing with an Omni boost is just it's not fair to anybody at all. Uh, and we're just gonna kind of see it finish off what's, what's remaining. They said if they were good enough to bluff it implying they were scarfed. I didn't think that implied th that it was scarfed. I thought it implied just the opposite. Let me see. Oh, yeah, Lando was scarfed. My bad. Okay, yeah. I guess I. Okay, I guess. So I fucked that up. Well, it shows what I know. I'm a big dumb idiot. <laughs> so, whatever. <laughs> um, anyways, the Omni Boost is what wins it here. If it was scarfed, then it didn't matter. I thought he bluffed him in the swooping, swapping out, but I guess it doesn't matter. Um. I, it doesn't make any sense that they would say if I bluffed that I was if I oh they were saying if I was good enough to bluff scarf ah uh, okay well we'll move on to the next one <laughs> the next one is myself versus God by the Chicago Phalanx this is still semifinals uh so jump into this um I knew go okay let's b before we jump in. Let me just point something out. <laughs> when I was preparing for this match, 
Uh, it was brought to my attention that God Bear did, doesn't have any... Like, look, let's look at the team. Let's look at my best Pokemon, Dragapult. Let's look at God Bear's team. What resists Dragon slash Ghost Stab? Nope. 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 No resist to Dragapult. That's... That's not a good... That's not a good sign. That's not a good sign. That is not a good sign. Um, so I lead with Shuckle, who I realize that in 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 the video where I have my live reaction, I, I see Breloom and I know that Breloom is putting something to sleep. I thought it was Choice Scarf. I was like, it's gonna be Scarf Spore. He's just gonna put something to sleep and swap out. Um, so I was super, super like focused about who I wanted to go to sleep and I decided I was okay with Shuckle going to sleep. So Shuckle goes to sleep. Uh, he swaps into Weezing, I swap into Dragapult, and I think what he's expecting is a sub Dragon Dance set. So he leaves the Weezing out. We actually discussed this. He was expecting a sub Dragon Dance set, so he leaves the Weezing out, and he has Taunt. So he's clicking Taunt to try to, like, if I click, uh, if I click Substitute, he can Taunt me so I'm not able to, um start dragon dancing and boosting so i just have basically a sub for nothing however i am choice specs dragapult i am not physical i am special uh so drago meteor just kills wheezing immediately making tapu bulu one of the scariest things on either side of the field um on so i now have the two scariest threats i have dragapult and i have tapu bulu in my mind like my my win kind at this point is taking out manaphy oh this was a really good read let's talk about this um, was taking out Manaphy, because Manaphy is really scary. Um, so I haze to try and stop the boosts, but he swaps, he doubles out. So I go into Moltres, he reads the Moltres swap, reveals Rock Tomb Courage, and completely deletes Moltres. Completely deletes Moltres. So excellent read from God Bear. So I go right back into Dragapult. Nothing, nothing on this team wants to eat a Choice Spec Draco Meteor, so he claims another soul. Uh, I double into Politoed. He goes, or I swap into Politoed. He doubles into Jolteon, predicting my swap, threatening me out. Uh, this is where I reveal I am special bulk shuckle because that shadow ball does absolutely nothing. He goes into Manaphy here, uh, says, hey, if shuckle's out, this is my chance to go ahead and start setting up. This time, instead of going into Politoed, I go into Tapu Bulu. Uh, which matters because it forces him to swap out. I get huge damage off on this thing. I'm still afraid of Scarf. I'm still afraid that this might be Scarfed. So I swap out here because I'm afraid this thing might have Sludge Bomb coverage. Um, instead, what we see is Rock Tomb again, which does a ton of damage to Shuckle. I mean, Shuckle is super bulky and this does a huge amount of damage, 45%. Thanks to the damage output, I was able to figure out that it was um, that it was, uh, Expert Belt. But look at that damage! That, that Bullet Seed damage to something that resists. Um, this is where God Bear, um, <laughs> swaps into Miss Magus, who lives the Choice Specs Draco Meteor on a roll. And then, at this point, I'm forced to make a decision. Do I leave this thing out and try to pick up a kill, or do I swap out? In my head, I know, I know for absolute certain this thing is Choice Scarf. This thing is Choice Scarf so it can outspeed and kill Dragapult. There's no shot in hell I'm leaving Dragapult out. I swap out the Shuckle and he starts spamming Shadow Ball. And I know he's locked in a Shadow Ball because he is Choice Scarf. So I decide, you know what, I'm just going to give uh, Shuckle up here. We'll get Sticky Webs out just in case we might need it. This is Quick Feet Jolteon. And at minus one speed, our Dragapult does outspeed, so those Sticky Webs were potentially important. But at this point, I s reveal Sucker Punch. We outspeed the Choice Scarf. We uh, claim the Miss Magus. That's three kills for Dragapult. Uh, we go in the Politoed here, who is able to um, acid... Well, yeah, we acid armor here to remove buffs. Uh, eat the Scald. It doesn't do anything to us. And I think we go ahead and swap into uh, Bulu here. And at this point, Choice Scarf Bulu uh, can't get killed by Jolteon. Um, I think God Bear's only play is going for a Thunderbolt Paralysis. Uh, instead goes for Shadow Ball, probably because it's the most damage. I mean, that it, it makes sense, I get it. Uh, but we outspeed everything and Woodhammer just kills. So, that's what we do. 
The one time I don't click acid armor, you go into blue. I figured if you were running acid armor, you were also running Calm Mind. So I, like, in my head, it was, I went Politoed last time. He's going to be expecting Politoed, so this time I'm going to go blue, and it worked out for me. Um, so yeah, that decides championship. Uh, so championship match is myself. Uh, the Alvine City Volties, uh, who, by the way, at this point, still hadn't lost a game since I stopped streaming my matches live. You got my head. My match was so bad, but it was fun. It was, it was, I, it was, I had fun. I had fun with it. <laughs> um, but yeah, at this point, I still hadn't lost since I stopped streaming my matches live. So I was feeling pretty good, uh, but I have a matchup against Pearly Whirly, the Pokemon Friendship Society, who destroyed me in regular season. Um, but I get a chance for revenge, and we'll see how it plays out, because I have a completely different team than I did when we matched up the first time. Uh, so right off the bat, I lead Crocodile. Uh, what this does is it scares Renrigus. I'm thinking, okay, you're going to want to try and set up hazards. You're not going to want to do that if Crocodile's out in front of you. Um, I have this Crocodile who just wants to eat and destroy everything, so this is championship match. Yes, this is the championship match. So I click knockoff, um, assuming there's going to be a swap, and the swap doesn't come. Pearly leaves Renrigus out, who lives, and then is able to set up Toxic Spikes, which Toxic Spikes can be super annoying. So I go into my big bird. Um, I immediately swap out because I know this thing gets Rock Slide, and it's faster than Moltres, and I don't want it to die, and then we see Rock Slide right there. Um, Escavalier eats it without any trouble, and Pearly U-turns out. Uh, and goes into Scizor. Um, I click, this is where I reveal Razor Shell. Uh, if we're in rain, I have this EV'd so that Razor Shell kills Landorus. So Escavalier is my Landorus counter in this match. It, nothing that this Landorus can hit me with can do more than 35% without any buffs. And this thing had, <laughs> it had uh, Metal Burst. It had Razor Shell, so if Rain's up, it just kills. And if not, then I can just click Metal Burst and it kills. But I go for Razor Shell here because I am expecting a swap. We do get some good chip damage off on the Scizor. Uh, we're able to go into Moltres. They boost, but Moltres doesn't care about anything Scizor wants to do. Now, this is where I kind of misplay. They, I already saw that their pivot for Moltres is Landorus. So I should have been clicking, I should have been clicking Overheat all day there instead of Defogging. Instead I prioritize Defog and then they go into Landorus. And here is where I'm thinking, okay, I could just go into S Cavalier here and be fine. <laughs> I, I was, I, I had Metal Burst. I had Metal Burst on it. Um, this is where I am thinking. This was my thought process here. Okay, last time I pivoted into S Cavalier. Pearly is all like one of those super analytical people who like tries to not only make this make the play that is going to be like it's gonna give you the best damage for coverage, but also tries to play to their like they try to play to their opponent's um habits. And I had just swapped into S Cavalier. So I am thinking. I am thinking, okay, they're expecting the Escavalier swap. They didn't like that matchup last time. They U-turned out, so they're just going to U-turn here for momentum so they can force out my Escavalier. That is what I'm thinking. So I'm like, I'm clicking Overheat. I am going to click Overheat. There is a chance this is Rock Polish Calm Mind, so maybe it's not max speed investment. Even if it stays out, maybe I kill. Uh, but they outspeed and they click Rock Slide, and they miss! They missed the rock slide, and this is when it all falls apart. Once Pearly misses this rock slide, the wheels fall off. Um, so, because they're minus one invasion, this overheat's guaranteed. We take out the Landorus, which takes off a ton of pressure from my team. I swap into Politoed because I don't want this thing setting up an Aurora Veil, so I gotta make sure the, that the that the Aurora Veil does not go up. I need weather control because Aurora Veil can only go up if Hail is up. I click Iron Tail, reveal that I'm Choice Scarf. They make the right swap and go into Scizor. So I go into Ultras here, who just scares the absolute shit out of everything on this team. Uh, especially in rain, because Hurricane hits even Dracovish hard. Um, I U-turn out, go into uh, Iris here, get the free Earthquake on this, back in the Moltres again. Uh, and this is where I get a free Overheat. 
Um, they make the right read. They expect overheat. They swap into Dragovish. It's four times resistance. Still does 22% damage, which is, which is decent chip. I was expecting Ficious Rend. So I... <laughs> I ran a super, super weird Polyrath set this week. I was running Choice Scarf, Water Absorb, Polyrath. I thought that I would be able to bluff Pearly because of Rain and Polyrath that they would assume Swift Swim, and I was running Choice Scarf to show Swift Swim and I, and in case I needed a matchup to outspeed something. That way they wouldn't know I was Water Absorb, so I had a Ficious Rend Immune switch in. I was trying to big, I was really, really trying to big brain it. <laughs> apparently Pearly knew. Uh, apparently Pearly knew, which whatever. Sure, Pearly knew, okay. Um, anyways, they clicked Super Fang, which is crazy. Um, so I'm thinking, okay, well, I don't know what their game plan here is. I don't know what their game plan here is, but I don't expect them to, I didn't expect them to leave this out against Polyrath. I didn't expect them to leave leave this out against Polyrath because I don't know, I just didn't expect it. Um, so I clicked Liquidation. I should have clicked Close Combat. I should have clicked Close Combat, but I didn't. I clicked Liquidation. We do get a defense drop, which helps us, uh, but we lose Polyrath to Psychic Fangs. But now I can go into Dragapult. And this was my mindset here. Pearly just saw me run through God Bear with Choice Specs Dragapult. I ran Choice Specs Dragapult against Pearly last time we played. So, like, I just assumed they would expect Choice Specs. Choice Specs, sorry, Choice Specs Dragapult. Plus, even if I'm not Choice Specs Dragapult, I just click Dragon Darts and this thing dies. I have always talked about how if it kills, I usually just go for it for the chip. Well, I guess they expected me to set up and set up and win, and I, that's not the set I'm running, and they had Lumberry, and they click Outrage, and they kill my Dragapult, so I give them Dragapult for free, but at this point, they're minus one defense, uh, Crocodile has a really hard hitting Earthquake, and nothing on this team wants to get Earthquaked, nothing on this team likes Earthquake, so we take Dracovesh. I was expecting the switch, I was expect, like, I thought it was... Pearly leaving Dracovish out in front of Dragapult is not a good play. I don't care what anybody says, that is not a good play. It is not a good play. And I was expecting them to switch, so I clicked Thunder I, I clicked Thunder Wave. That was I was like, they always switch here. I'm clicking Thunder Wave. Apparently clicking Thunder Wave was the actual bad play, because they had Lumberry Dracovish, because that's a thing that people do. And I just lose Dragapult. <laughs> I, so I just lose Dragapult for nothing when I could have clicked Dragon Move and they just would have lost Dracovish for free. It just didn't make sense to me, but whatever. I overpredict and it cost me my Dragapult, but it doesn't matter because I have Moltres and Moltres just eats everything on this team. It eats everything on this team. Overheat just destroys everything on this team. There's nothing left on this team that can live a overheat from this Moltres. So I just click overheat. It's free every single time. I swap out because I don't want Aurora Veil to get set up. Uh, they miss a Blizzard because, yeah, Blizzard's super inaccurate and there's no hail. They take this chance to set up and I get some good chip off with Scald. Um, and this kills, which was surprising to me because this was max special defense. Even at plus two special attack, I'm pretty sure that's, that was a roll. Um, but I outspeed, I know I can kill. We get some free earthquake damage off here. Um, we saw, we get a crit and think that maybe we can finish the scissor off, but we don't. Um, and they roost, and this gives me a chance to, you know what, rain's gone. I go into Moltres, I click overheat, something dies. And then instead of going into Regilecki uh, to force out Moltres, they go into Scizor and just give Scizor up for free. And at this point, like, it's over. Uh, so yeah, missing that Rock Slide allows Moltres to just win. Um, I'm not sure... I'm not sure that Rock Slide hits that I lose, but I am also not sure... I don't... I, it's certainly closer than it was. Like, if that Rock Slide hits, it's certainly much closer than it was. Um, I still had some win cons, but, like, that Rock Slide miss just made it so that Moltres was, could just, like, slowly wear the team down, and it just, it worked for me, so, that was it, that was the championship match.
I won my first draft league. I've never won a draft league before, ever. Uh, I've done a lot of them. I've gone to the championship match in a couple of them, uh, but this is the first time I won one. So thank you. Um, it it was it felt really good. It feels good to finally get that first draft league championship. Um, I win the prize. Well, I'm the one that pays for the prize, so <laughs> I don't actually. I just get to save my money. I just get to save my money. So that's cool too. I like that. But I still have to shiny hunt a Dragovish for Pearly, which is not going to be great. Um, <laughs> the uh, final thing we'll talk about is the finals MVP. It's got to be Moltres. It's got to be Moltres. Mo Moltres got four kills. Moltres was also super good in uh, my first match against Corfungal. Uh, in fact, the only match Moltres wasn't good in was against Godbear, and that's because Godbear made it a elite tier read and killed Moltres. Otherwise, Moltres was also a problem for Godbear. Moltres is just a good Pokemon. Moltres is a good Pokemon. Uh, I should have used Moltres more aggressively all season, but whatever. We uh, we got the, we got that championship, and Moltres was our finals MVP. And yeah, that's it. I should have joined. I would have known all those moves you did. Totally. You totally would have known them. Uh, but yeah, that's that's it. That's the season two. That's season two of the Miss Starzard Draft League. I don't know when season three will be. I guess whenever people start requesting that we do another Draft League season. That's the only reason I did this one is because people were asking about it. Um, but yeah, I need a break for now. It won't be anytime soon. It was a fun season. Thank you to all the coaches that participated. Um, and honestly, it was super competitive this season. It wasn't nearly this competitive last season, so it was a lot of fun. Uh, and it, that makes it feel even better that I was able to win in a league where the skill levels, like the average skill level felt much higher this season than it did last season. So yeah, I don't know. feels good. Uh, but that's going to do it. Uh, I won't be doing any more draft league recap videos for a while, but I am in the blast burn radio. Uh, draft league so I'll be posting reaction videos for those so keep an eye out for those and uh, yeah thanks for following along this season y'all I really appreciate it and I'll catch y'all next season